Hi, welcome to Blue Prism Tutorials. My name is Amir. This is part 16, working with action states. In this session, we will learn how to work with action states and also we will learn how to get the data from the SQL server by using business object or using action states and also we will see the live scenario how to manipulate the data which we have fetched the data from the SQL server. First of all, we will see what are the prerequisites required before going to start this session. If you see on my screen, I'm having four prerequisites or the four videos which you have to go through first before going to start this session. So first, if you see, I'm having how to connect SSMS and then how to create the table and how to insert the data by using a SQL statement. And we will see how to work with the select state. These videos are available in my SQL videos. Please go through once and you will get an idea. Now we will see what is action stage. As of now, we have seen so many stages in Process Studio. The most important of this is action, which allows calling a page in web view. This action stage can also invoke a SOAP based web service or call a COM object directly. If necessary, a process can also call another Blue Prism process through Process Studio. As per the name suggests, actions implement the logic of a business object. Each action includes a set of stages along with data items holding information utilized by that action. An action can be published which lets it is be called by methods and probably by another software also. An action can also remain hidden, making it available only the other actions in this business object. Whichever option is preferred, the action begins with the start stage and finishes with the end stage. In between, appear whatever the stages are required to carry out the task that action performs. Okay, now we are having a scenario over here. If you see on my screen, I'm having a table called students marks. Over there, what I'm having, I'm having a name, class, roll number, and the subjects that what we're having. And I have given some of the data over here and some of the students' details based on their class and their roll number, what are the marks they have pursued. So in this session, what we are going to do, this data that we are going to insert the data in SQL Server Management Studio, and going, we are going to retrieve the data on our business process, and then we are going to manipulate the data and then finally, we are going to show the results based on the, what the sum of the marks that the student has been pursued. So this is the live scenario that what I'm going to show you in this session. Let me show you the steps that watch you, what we are involved in this flow diagram. If you see over here, this is the diagram that I am going to show you and going to implement in business process. Okay, if you see over here, I'm going to create the table at the database side, nothing but SQL Server Management Studio. And then I'm going to insert some of the data over there. So from there, I can go ahead and fetch the records, right? So what is the action that I'm going to use it? First, I'm going to connect the database. How? By I'm having an action stage, I'm going to be getting the action stage on my Canvas Studio, and then I'm going to connect with my database by using action stage. Next. At the second step, I'm going to fetch the data from the student's table using action state. I will show you all these things in, in Blue Prism live scenarios, okay? Then what are the data you are going to fetch it from by using the action state? I'm going to show the data in, in, in my canvas by using the collection stays. That is the step three. And then as a fourth one that I want to some of the I want to calculate the sum of the marks pursued by the students, right? So that what I'm going to do, I'm going to use calculation stays, okay, to manipulate the data or to add the data, and then I'm going to store the data in collection stays. But I'm having multiple number of students, right? So that what I'm going to use, I'm going to use loop stays over there to fetch the data and to go ahead and iterate the data. Okay, these are all, you know, I'm going to use the same way how I'm going to show you over here as a data flow diagram. Now, first of all, let me switch to SQL Server Management Studio. So this is the reason that why I asked to go through the uh, prerequisites if you don't have an idea how to create a table or how to insert the data into the table 
and how to use the select query. That's the reason I have asked you to go through the prerequisite videos in my SQL Server videos. Okay. Now, if you see on my screen, what I'm having, I'm having a create statement, create table statement, and then I'm having an insert statement. Let me copy this one. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the table with the name of student marks and I'm going to insert the data into the student marks with the different different values. Okay, now let me go ahead and let me execute this. Now if you see over here, I'm having students marks as a table and I can see the data over there in this table. The seven rows has been recorded successfully, right? Now let me go ahead and let me go ahead and let me select the top thousand records. If you see what are the data I have inserted over there, the data is available in my table. Correct. Now let me switch to Blue Prism Virtual Workforce. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a process, create a new process with the name of practice session for action stays. I'm mentioning the name as practice session for action stays. And then I'm going to click on next. And then I'm going to just give in the description as it is, and I'm going to click on finish. If you see over here, a new process has been created. Now let me go ahead and let me double click on that one. By default, you can get start and end, correct? Now what I'm going to do as per our steps, we have to manipulate the data or we have to calculate the number of marks per each student and then I'm going to store the data, right? So as a first step, I want to get the connectivity. What is the state that I'm going to use it? I'm going to use action stays. Let me double click on the action. And if you see over here, the name I'm going to describe it as set connectivity to DB. Now, if you see in my previous session, okay, I have asked you to go to import the visual business objects, right? If you see over here, based on that, I'm going to get it data SQL server and MS Excel as we have seen it. When I'm going to select the data, I'm right now I'm going to work on the data SQL server, correct? If you see the actions, these are all the defined actions or the functions that what will say that. If you see over here, what will happen? First, I want to set the connectivity, right? Now click on the set connectivity. If you see over here, the inputs are server, database, user, and the password. How can I get all these details? How can I fill the details? Let me switch back to SQL Server Management Studio. Let me go and connect once again. If you see, I'm going to click on database engine. If you see, this is the server name what I'm going to have it. Let me go ahead and let me copy that. And just remember the database name also as sample DB. Now, let me switch back to Process Studio. And I'm going to give the server name over here. If you see over here, for the expression purpose, let me double click on that one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give pasting the name in double quotes. This is the server name what I'm having. And I'm going to click on validate. Now the expression is valid. Click on OK. And again, I'm going to click on OK. As the first parameter that I have given the server name. Now going for the database. So what is the database that we are going to connect? As we've seen over there, sample DB is my database name. Let me click on validate. The expression is valid and then click OK. Okay, what about the username and password? If you see on my screen what happening, okay, while I'm going to connect with the database, I'm using authentication as Windows Server so that I'm not going to use any username and password. So I'm going to keep blank over here, over here also when I'm going to connect with the set connectivity to DB. If you are going to use the SQL Server authentication, SQL authentication, then you have to provide username and password. Now click on OK. This is the first step that we are going to connect with the database. Now, what I'm going to do as a second step, I'm going to fetch the data. So how can I fetch the data? If you see over here, I'm going to use select query to fetch the data into my, into my uh, output of the action stage. Now, the same way that I'm going to use, let me double click on the action. I'm going to say fetch data at the name prop. Now, again, I'm going to going for the business object, selecting data SQL server. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the action as get collection. I'm going to retrieve the data from the database, right? So I want to retrieve and store somewhere in the database. Now, what is the query that I'm going to use it? If you see over here, I'm going to write the select query, select of all the records. I'm going to give the same expression over here, select, 
name, class, roll number, English, Hindi, what are the subjects that we are having it. As an extra condition for the time being, I'm going to add null as results. I will tell you why I'm going to use this extra column code here. Let me click on validate. The expression is valid and then click on OK. OK, now what are the values that have been coming over here? I want to store somewhere. What, where I have to store the data. Let me go to outputs. If you see over here, for the get collection action, I'm having success, message, and the results. Okay, what are the data that you want to store it? I'm going ahead and click on success, store in success, message, what are the message it is going to getting? I'm going to store it in message. If you see over here, by default, I'm going to getting it in all the things. But whereas results also, when I'm going to double click it, the results are going to be storing in results. But what I'm going to planning it, I'm going to create a new collection with the name saying as, renaming as student marks. I'm going to defining it manually. Let me go ahead and let me click on OK. But before that, let me drag and drop this into the results and click on OK. Now, if you see, I'm having results over here, but I don't want to use it anymore. So I'm going to delete it. Student marks messages and these are all the data items and or the collections that what we're having let me go ahead as a third step i want to store the data into my collection student marks let me double click on that one what is the fields that i am having i'm going to give it as name what the name i'm having text okay and i'm going to add all the rows in a such way whichever what are the values that i'm having If you see now that I have added all the fields like name, class number, roles, and all the six subjects, and as I have added extra column as results, because of I want to store the data when it has been calculated, and I want to store the data in results. That's the reason I have added extra field as results. And if you see, I'm not going to use any kind of initial values, and I don't have any current values as of now. As of now. So this is the student mark collection. Let me click ahead, OK, and if you see, over here, I'm having the student marks. Now, once the data has been fetched, by using fetch data, it will store the data in students' marks. Now, what I want to do, each and every, every record that I want to add all the student uh, all the student marks, but the particular student, I want to sum up the marks of the, all the subjects, right? So what I have to do, I'm going to use calculation stage over here. So I'm going to give it a name as sum of marks so what i want to do if you see over here i'm having student marks over here i want some of all the marks right so english hindi i'm going to drag all the subjects one by one and finally i'm going to store all these values in the result so where i have to store it if you see over here in the students that i'm having results as my column that's the reason i have added extra column while i'm going to create the collection OK, now go ahead and let me validate. The expression is valid. Go ahead and click on OK. Now, if you see what will happen, it will, the first record, if you see, if I'm not going to use any kind of looping conditions or loop stays, then what will happen? It will only, the what of the first record is there, that will be calculated only. I want to calculate all the students, right? And I want to show the results in that. So that what I'm going to do, I'm going to use loop condition over here. OK, what I'm going to say, this loop that I'm going to looping in collection, right? So I'm going to say student for loop. OK, and I'm going to give the collection as student marks. Now I'm going to click on OK. So what will happen right now? Let me go ahead and let me give the explanation over here. First of all, I'm going to connect to my database by using set connectivity, by using action stage as set connectivity, and then I have given all the parameters. Now, from the by using fetch data action that I'm going to get the, all the data and I'm going to store the data in student marks collection table collection stays. Then I'm going to to calculate the marks in year for each and every student. I'm going to use those calculation stays 
I'm going to give it as a sum of marks. In sum of marks, I have given an expression of all the subjects, correct? And then to store the data, I'm having extra column out there as results. And then finally, I have to calculate each and every student data. That's the reason I'm going to use for loop. Now I'm going to linking from start to set connectivity, set connectivity DB to fetch data, and then fetch data to for loop, for loop to calculation, and some of uh, calculation stays to again end of the for loop and finally end. Okay, these are all the things that we have given. Let me go ahead and let me check it out. Is there any errors? If you see, I'm having the warnings as of now, but I don't have any kind of errors. Let me go ahead. Let me close it. Let me run the process. What of the process? The practice session for the action stays. Let me run it. If you see, first of all, it is going to be check the set connectivity. It has been, if you see on the bottom side, each and every stage, which process it is going to be going. And after that, it is going to be getting the data. If you see from my database, I'm having seven rows. And each and every row, I'm going to calculate it, row five, row six, row seven, by using a for loop. And then finally, it's going to an end stage. Now, let me go ahead and let me double click on the student marks. If you see, I have not given any initial values. And the current values, if you see, what are the JAGs, myth, all are related to the class 10th, and row numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you see, I'm having all the uh, subjects for these two, uh, subject marks to, uh, related to the students if you see finally the sum of the uh, some of the marks for each and every student will get it if you see out of seven people i'm having 590 as my topper so how we are going to get it the data the sum of the subjects i'm going to calculate and storing it in results field this is the live scenario that we are going to check it out over here if you see that have used a school server management studio but most of the time we will use SQL Server only. Few people are going to use MS Excel also. And I have shown you how to connect with the database and how to fetch the record from the database and how to store the records and how to manipulate the records by using calculation stays. And we are looping it by using loop stays. And finally, we are going to store the data, the results in our collection stays. I hope you have understood this session. Also, if you have any queries, please reach me about the action stays. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.